Hi guys, so if you clicked on this video, you're probably interested in knowing about the nasty things that happen to my skin and the helpful but also unhelpful patch testing that I had done. Just to summarize, just in case you weren't one of the 10 people that watched my How Fake Nails Ruined My Face video, I was applying fake nails and somehow uh, I was allergic to some part of them because my face was oozing blood, pus, it was peeling, I'll insert some pictures. It was so itchy that it was waking me up during the night. And I didn't realize it at the time that it was the fake nails because who would think they were allergic to fake nails? Not me. And once it went away, I kind of figured what it was because I had stopped wearing fake nails. Anywho, in the meantime, I was diagnosed with contact dermatitis allergic contact dermatitis. Not sure if there's a difference between the two, maybe one's not allergic, yeah, anyway, moving on. So the second time around really did it for me because the first time I was sure it was the fake nails and I stopped wearing them and I was like, oof, your girl is cured. Um, and then it randomly just comes back and then my family's here like, ooh, what's wrong with your face? And um, they're like, wouldn't I like to know? So, that also lasted for a bit and I started eliminating products one by one because I just wanted to try something to figure it out. I figured out that it was a cleanser that I was using because when I stopped using it, the systems went away pretty fast. What really bothered me was that this cleanser was expensive. I bought it to get rid of my pimples, but it got rid of more than my pimples. It got rid of my skin. Um, my face around my mouth was raw. I'll insert some pictures, uh, my skin was reacting, it was popping up these weird bumps, not pimples, but just weird irritation and texture all around my mouth, which was not so pleasant to have. And that made me think, okay, so now there's two things that have caused this allergic contact dermatitis, supposedly. And my patch testing appointment was in September right now, same time as Neological, which I kind of felt special about because we kind of went through a similar thing. <laughs> Side note, so my dermatologist actually gave me a list of products that are quote unquote safe to use. They're simpler, they're cleaner. So I'll actually put that list at the end of this video for all the people that want just the simplest of simple products. And if you happen to be located here in Canada, that's great because all these products are available here because unfortunately most of the videos that I watch from America, Canada is not as lucky to have such good products. I think I got a little sidetracked here. Um, we're gonna move back to the patch testing. So the dermatologist tells me, bring everything you use. And I'm like, everything? He's like, everything. And in my mind, I'm thinking, okay, like she clearly doesn't know that I have a shopping problem and that everything is about a suitcase for me to sort of bring it all but you know I'm there nonchalantly yeah of course so the night before I pack it all up how many kilos it was we'll we'll never know but my arm hurt <laughs> the next day so I get to the dermatologist and they already have picked out 150 chemicals that I will be tested for and fitting 150 chemicals on your back takes takes up a lot of space so there was only room for about 10 of my products to be tested and I'm sitting there like okay kind of wish somebody would have told me to only bring 10 products and like not everything um but anyway that was that and I'll put a picture of what my back looked like with all the chemicals on it that part was actually pretty fast it took like 15 minutes oh but the funny part is I didn't even get 10 products tested because the nurse came out to the waiting room and was asking me what products would you like to have tested. So I started taking all these products out of my big bag and just giving them to her. And once I gave her six products, I realized like, hey, like she's really having trouble holding them. And in my mind, I'm thinking each of those products is about 50 to to $100. So I'm not trying to have her dropping any. So I just tell her, okay, yeah, that's all, thank you. So I only got six products tested and thankfully I didn't react to any of them, but we'll get into what I did react to. <laughs> so after they slapped these chemicals onto my back, they told me that 
I can shower for about a week till I come back for the final reading. I can take sponge baths. So if you want to fill out an application below and I'll select one person to give me a sponge bath. And if you're not selected, consider yourself lucky. <laughs> Jokes aside, that part is done. Thankfully it's done. Nobody was selected. Nobody will be selected. Um, it was difficult, more difficult than I thought because not getting your back wet is, I mean, your back makes up a pretty big portion of your body, which we all know, but we don't think about. Anywho, those were the only instructions that I got. Uh, but then I watched Neological, who was also getting patch testing done, and they told her she can't sleep on her back. So I'm like, oh my goodness, why didn't nobody tell me that? I don't want to, you know, ruin my results that I've waited three years for. So I decided for the first night, I didn't sleep on my back. I slept on my stomach. I woke up with what felt like a sprained spine. I know that was not the case, but my lower back was just killing me. And like, there was some knot in my spine that, anywho, you can rest assured that for the remaining four nights, I definitely slept on my back because <laughs> they didn't tell me. So I thought, hey, thank you, Neological. I listened to you for the first night, but for the remaining nights, you girls gotta get some sleep. <laughs> During this time, what I noticed happening was one of the patches was looking rough. She was looking nasty. Um, it was like black and red and yellow. Um, I'm gonna insert a picture because I don't know how to describe it. So if you're easily grossed out, then please just skip the next three seconds. Uh, that's how it looked. Thankfully, it wasn't itchy or anything because a lot of people told me that my back would be itchy, but mine wasn't, which was very good because I felt like if it was itchy, it would have driven me crazy because my patience is already thin. So. We don't need much to uh, pull me over <laughs> to the edge. Two days after getting the patches put on, it was time to take them off. And my dermatologist told me to just take them off at home. So I had my mom do that. She lovingly volunteered herself, even though she didn't like that she had to draw on my back with the marker because you have to re-outline those boxes so it doesn't fade. Um, when we looked at my back, it actually didn't look that bad. There were a few darker spots, which... I knew was dye even though my dermatologist didn't tell me that it was dye because I had watched Neological whose dermatologist had warned her of more but yeah mine did not but hey that's why we have Neological um <laughs> so that was helpful because like I definitely would have been wondering why is my back black like is this necrosis also thankfully that one part of my back that was looking nasty once I took the patch off it didn't look that bad it kind of looked like weird and textury but it wasn't as scary as I thought it was gonna be because like it felt like it just like ate through my skin which it didn't and then three days after that I went back to the dermatologist for the reading and a part of me was thinking what's she gonna read because my back looked fine everything that was there like faded so I'm there like okay is this was this a waste um but somehow she read that i was allergic to formaldehyde and all its derivatives i'll put some of the ones that i'm allergic to in the description just so people are aware that formaldehyde i never knew that i was allergic to it because i wore nail polish a lot and i never had any reaction but it was when i started wearing fake nails um that it started happening so something to keep track of because I feel like we think that we're allergic to skincare, makeup, but it can be something as simple as like you put polysporin on your finger and if you're allergic to one of its ingredients, then you touch your face and then maybe your lip reacts and then you think, oh no, it's a lip balm that I'm using, but actually it's like polysporin that you put on your finger like one week ago and then you're body reacted like one week later so it's so hard to connect so I'm happy that I got this patch testing done anyways formaldehyde is my diagnosis so then the final step was to go through all of my products and see if any of them contain these ingredients and 
take a while to guess which product contained it. The cleanser. The $70 cleanser that I bought for my sensitive acneic skin. So what does this teach us? That expensive doesn't always mean better, even though that product didn't have many ingredients. Like I looked through it and I obviously didn't realize that was formaldehyde since it was a derivative. Um, I looked through it. I think it had maybe like 10, 15 ingredients, which really isn't that much considering some companies. I think um, it cosmetics. That company has some of the longest ingredient lists like when i go on sephora and because i was actually going to buy one of their serum concealer you know those really cool products that they're always coming out with and it was on sale i'm like gonna get myself a good product for a good deal and then i went on to the ingredient list and like you have to scroll because there's so many ingredients and i'm like whoa like i understand that like you know maybe they're good ingredients you know i don't know what the purpose of every ingredient is you know some ingredient it could be like really good for like inflammation for dark circles for this for that but it's like isn't it just expensive to have like 100 ingredients even if the ingredients are cheap you still have to source 100 ingredients like just put like i don't know 50 30 i don't know so that's what we learned and um from now on i am definitely transitioning to more of a i don't want to say cleaner skincare because i have been transitioning towards that for a couple of years now looking at fragrances and um just because a product is clean you know labeled clean at sephora it can still have fragrance and it can still be an irritant because you you really have to look at the amount of the ingredients so sometimes uh i don't know which product i bought it was like it looked nice it was all like you know grapeseed oil aloe vera this and that and like you know this oil and this extract and it's like hey there's like 50 extracts yes that sounds amazing but for somebody with sensitive skin i feel like just give me a couple extracts and uh that'll do <laughs> What I also want to do is transition to using products that are only in palms just because I feel like that's more hygienic and you're not, you know, sticking your grubby fingers in there every time you want to get some product. But that's another story because good luck finding a product that's clean in terms of ingredients that works while also coming in a pump. I'm not sure if a full line of those products exists yet yeah i don't know if there's a line that like solely makes products in pumps because that would be amazing you know serums usually come into pumps but like give me a moisturizer in a pump give me an eye cream in a pump give me give me it all in a pump <laughs> anyway thank you guys for watching my video if you enjoyed please like and subscribe